Welcome to Movies with McLean. Uh, this is episode 28 of our weekly podcast. We talk all things movies on this podcast, and with me today are three great guests. Here for the first time, Max Brazi. Max, how you doing? Pretty good. How's it going? Glad to be here. Yeah, I'm glad to have you. And back for uh, the third week, third episode in a row, we have uh, Griffin Burris. What's up, guys? And Eric Thomas. All right, all right, all right. I'm glad to have all you guys, and uh, this is a big episode today. It is an episode one year in the making. Uh, if you remember, our very first episode was Top 10 Films of 2015, so today we're talking Top 10 Movies of 2016. And we all have our own lists, and uh, this is all we're talking about today, just the Top 10. So how this is going to work, uh, we're each going to share our 10 through 6, and then our 5 through 2, and then our number 1 film of the past year. So, starting off today, Max is going to share his list first. So, Max, uh, start us off with your number 10. All right. At number 10, I have Popstar, Never Stop, Never Stopping. And this is a mockumentary starring Andy Samberg and the rest of the guys from Lonely Island. And I was actually kind of excited to see this movie because it's got the cast from one of my favorite movies, Hot Rod. That's one of my favorite comedies. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but basically it just makes fun of all the celebrities that are in Hollywood now and like so I remember watching the Justin Bieber movie once and just hating every second of it so it's good to see a movie like this that pokes fun at all that and it's got some good songs in it too that's probably my favorite part okay yeah I'm a big fan of Hot Rod uh, I haven't seen Popstar yet but I heard it was pretty funny I, I thought it, yeah. I thought from the trailers it looked like kind of dumb but like I heard like pretty much only positive things yeah, the so. feedback everyone thought it was pretty funny so. yeah glad to hear you liked it uh, did you see it Eric? Uh, I've not seen it, so, but I mean, usually that cast is pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then, that's basically all it is, it's just dumb humor, but it got me, and I loved every second of it, so, that's my number 10, and then, at number 9, I've got, uh, Kubo and the Two Strings, which is like an animated movie, and it's basically just an adventure movie starring this kid named Kubo, and what I really liked about this is just how, like, simple it is, it's, pretty short actually and it just this guy goes on an adventure picks up some armor to eventually like save his family and his mother so and that actually had some good people in the cast that had Matthew McConaughey as a uh, beetle and then I think I forget who it was was it Charlize Theron maybe I think as, she was in it yeah and she was monkey and like it doesn't waste any time in the beginning like introducing the characters or anything and, like it just as the story goes on you learn more about them and I really like that so, yeah, just the small cast and the characters, I really liked, and it's good to see, like, a good animated movie that's not Disney or Pixar, so that was good. Well, I've actually never heard of that movie. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 I, I, yeah, I remember hearing about it, I and I'm like, that it. looks really interesting, but it's just one of those that you, like, kind of see the trailer, yeah. like, and then you um, kind of forget about it, so yeah, it's I, interesting that you have it on your list, I definitely gotta go see that. Yeah, I could never find it in theaters either, so I had to watch it online. So. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, well, I, I bet you didn't see it in theaters, because I know, like, even though I, it got good reviews and all, I'm pretty sure it, like, kind of flopped at the box office, so it's really? a shame, because I had heard good things about it, yeah. so that's one I definitely need to uh, check out, too. Glad to hear that's on your list. Uh, what's next, Max? Uh, number eight, I got 10 Cloverfield Lane, and I know, do you have it higher on your list, Griffin? So should we wait to talk about that? Yeah. Okay. And All then right. so, so we're pushing that back in the discussion. Down Actually, no, it's not higher on my list. My okay. list. <laughs> so number eight, okay. I got ten Cloverfield Lane. So what I liked about this movie is it was really just like it was a horror movie, sort of, but just John Goodman's performance is really my favorite part about this movie. He just plays yeah. a really creepy old man. And you kinda you don't really I don't want to spoil anything. But, you don't know if you can trust him. Yeah, you don't know yeah. if you can trust him at all, but then, the end, you kind of see something, and you're like, wait, and it kind of brings you back to the beginning of the movie. It's not, I wouldn't call it a twist, because it's kind of out there, the whole movie, Yeah. but I thought that part was really interesting, the end, and then just the whole, like, escapist-type movie I really like, and then, does anyone else have anything? Oh, there? yeah, yeah, I, I, it didn't make my list, but I really enjoyed it, um, 10 Cloverfield Lane, I thought, um, just like really suspenseful at moments but then also mm. like really funny at yeah. other moments 
I think it was it was great, like how it made you like laugh and then just be on the edge of your seat. It like, got super serious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah. John Goodman dancing scene. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that was <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Dude, I like the act. The acting in that movie was incredible. I yeah, I agree. I don't know. Do you know what the girl's name was? The Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Know. Yeah, I thought she was really good. Yeah, I, I think my favorite scene was like when I don't want to like spoil, but like. When she's crawling through the tunnel, if, oh, if you remember that, mm-hmm. like that was just like the yeah. most suspenseful. It was like super. Su- that movie was the really whole suspenseful. Movie, yeah. It was like yeah. tense. Yeah, it was. The vibe it gave off was awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then there's stuff just like that comes up throughout the movie. You're like, what is going on outside of this? Because it's really condensed, and then like, yeah. there's so much going on outside too that just makes it a bigger picture. I, I really liked the whole movie until the end. Honestly, I'm not you gonna. Ruin it. I'm not gonna ruin it. But I like, actually like the end. Yeah, see, I, was I like. Just, the I, wasn't yeah, I like. I know it's kind of shoehorned in there. I just wasn't just expecting it. I was like, what is going on right now? Like this movie is just some like really slow, tense. I don't know, and then it just like totally like flipped. I don't know. I thought it was pretty cool, but... It was cool, like, it was just, I wasn't expecting it at all. Yeah, it's yeah. different, I guess. Kind of yeah. like, it gets you thinking at the end, because yeah. you see this character, and you think he's the antagonist the whole time, and you're like, oh, wait, maybe never mind. Yeah. I don't want to spoil anything further than that, but... Mm. So then, are we good with that? Yeah, go ahead. So, number seven, I have Manchester by the Sea. Oh, that's, uh, let me see. Oh, wait, that's also my number seven. Okay, so... we'll so go we'll ahead talk and talk about it right this. now. Yeah. All right, well, Manchester by the Sea, the thing that I like the most about this movie is... Just like I say, 10 Cloverfield Lane, the acting was amazing. Casey Affleck was, like, incredible. I think he could probably won win an Oscar for that. Uh, it was really, like, an emotional movie. and it, Like, it was pretty yeah. tough to watch, but, like, after the end, like, you want... I watched the beginning, and I wasn't... I didn't love the movie, really. Yeah. Until, like, it keeps flashing back, and, mm-hmm. like, 30 minutes into the movie, maybe, maybe an hour into the movie, you see something, and you're like, whoa, like... I get why this guy is the way he is. Everything yeah. you think about him, and yeah. From that time on, I was just dialed into the movie, and it was like really, like really emotional movie. And that's all I say about that. I, I heard it was sad. Yeah, it was yeah. very sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really enjoyed it too. I, I agree with what you said. I think that Casey Affleck is the best performance I've seen all year um, in Manchester. And I think uh, what you said, like you kind of hate him at the beginning because yeah. he's, he's like a dick but then you see what happened which we won't like ruin that but then you just sympathize mm-hmm. uh, with him after that and it's just like a heartbreaking movie but it's a it's a great story and it's a true story uh i'm mean, not not a true story but like it it like it's deep. It sh- yeah like it deals with real like themes mm-hmm. like and uh it feels real like it feels like you're watching real people I, I, that's yeah, how good the acting that, yeah. is well, um and then it, I think it's bold because this movie shows you that like there are some things that like you just can't beat in life, mm-hmm. um, like without spoiling anything. Like there's just some some obstacles that are too tough in life, and I think it was bold that they that they showed that. Um, now I, I like the way they ended it too. So you think it was a good movie? Nominated for best actor. I think it win. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. yeah, I agree with that. Dang, yeah, there's, there's, a, lot. Yeah. there's a scene at the end. I don't know if it's the very last scene, but when he's talking. To, to his ex-wife. Yeah, his ex-wife. Yeah. And I don't know who played that one either. I'm Michelle that Williams. Actually, Michelle yeah. Williams. And, like, then you realize, like, dang, he can't get over that. Like, there's just some things that yeah. is too hard. But And it's like, you try to move on in life, but, like, that just, like, that hit me. That was good. I, like, I don't know how you can get over that. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> And I, I I really enjoyed the performance from uh from the from the kid too. Um, yeah, I was gonna say. I thought I thought, I thought he he'll really have a good uh, yeah. future in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he just reminded me of like a lot of kids you see in high school. So yeah, I that was what you said. Yeah, All very the real. So stories. real. Yeah. So, my last one and my bottom five was number six. I had Deadpool. Oh, we're pushing that back. And I yeah. Figured, so. yeah. Yeah, we'll move that on. That was also my six. Wow. Nice, nice grip. <laughs> All right, uh, I guess we'll go to my list then. So my number 10 is The Jungle Book. Anyone else? Oh, actually, I know I like what your list are. So uh, The Jungle Book, uh, I thought that um, it's not really on like as good as any of the other movies on my list, but I, st- I still think it deserved a mention at number 10. Um, I think that what they did with the effects in The Jungle Book was just incredible. Like, it looks so real but yet none of it is real with all the animals and the landscape and everything um except the kid uh the the only thing i didn't really like was like the when christopher walken started singing i just thought that was kind of creepy (laughs) but um 
I thought it was a good story, and I think that, like, really anyone could enjoy it. Um, like, if you're a kid or an adult, I think it's it's just a good movie that anyone can enjoy. So, that's my number 10. And my number 9 is The Nice Guys. Uh, we you can push it out there. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah push that up. All right, uh, number eight, I'm pretty sure we're going to push this one back. Rogue One. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> number seven, we just talked about Manchester by the Sea. And number six is Sing Street. Uh, anyone else see Sing Street? I saw that. You I saw like it? That one. Okay, yeah. So I really enjoyed Sing Street. Just watched it recently. Uh, it's on Netflix, so if you haven't seen it, I think you should check it out. It's like a simple story about uh, a guy who wants to impress a girl, so he starts a band. And uh, the music is actually pretty good, for the most part. Yeah, um, it was good. And uh, it, it's an Irish movie, so that, like, uh, if you haven't heard of it, um, that's probably why. But I think um, it's a great story about, um, like, brotherhood, too, because, like, uh, there there's a good story about the main character's older brother who's sort of, like looked on looked at as a failure but mm. he does what he can and to make sure that his brother succeeds uh with his band and with um like with this girl that he likes because if he can't succeed then he just wants the best for his brother so i thought that was like a really good story there and uh it kind of reminded me of like uh goodwill hunting in some yeah, ways yeah i was gonna say i'm saying the so, same thing really? yeah. probably great my favorite movie. movie of all time really yeah. that's a great movie. okay yeah so um i really enjoyed it and uh i guess there's not much else i can say but yeah what do you think my favorite part was definitely the performance of the brother especially at the end when it's like the happy ending and stuff and then it shows like i the brother just looking back and like that acting like on his face i thought that was like incredible like that ending i love that yeah. So that's all I have to say about that, really. Yeah. It was a pretty simple movie. There wasn't much to it, but, like, it was really good, I thought. Yeah, really good. And I think, like, really relatable, too, just, mm -hmm. like, being in high school, dealing with a lot of stuff. And, like, the guy's going through a lot of shit, too. Like, yeah, it's not like just, like, bully. yeah, getting bullied and, like, dealing with stuff at home. So, okay. the um, kid's an asshole. Oh, the, like, the yeah. bully kid, yeah. Uh, and I also wanted to point out, I thought it was really funny that, like, uh, for the band, they were like, oh, well, there's one black guy in the kid, so we have to get him on the band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or one black guy in the school, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought base. that was pretty funny. Um, but, yeah, that's all I have to say. So, we'll move on to Eric's list. All right, so uh, I'm going to kick off my number 10. I'm going to I put uh, Batman vs. Superman in there, actually. Ooh. You're probably the only one with that on their list. So. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not trying to be the same, you know. Uh -uh. So why That's I put right. it in there, I think uh, it had like one or two key things that really brought it down. But uh, Griff shaking his head over here. The uh, people listening can't see that, but uh, I don't know. I thought if you take all the hype away, I thought honestly... And you take like one or two things being being royal spoiled by the uh, trailers, then honestly, I still thought it deserved to be at the number ten, because I mean, I mean, one you got Batman's Affleck. See the thing that they just got like there was so much like going for it, and then they would do one thing that just ruined mm -hmm. it. You know what I mean? Like Batman's or Affleck's uh, Batman was so good, and then that scene, you know, I mean, I'm sure most of the people have seen the movie, but. <laughs> You know, the scene where after he fights Superman and, you know, Martha. yeah, the whole Martha thing, it's like, uh, you know what I mean? It's like, what was that? You know, it was going so good until that point. And the thing I always say, too, is uh, imagine how great that Doomsday reveal would have been if we didn't have the trailer that showed that Doomsday was in the movie. You know what I mean? I if we didn't have that spoiled for us. Why do like, you think it would be just like a that? Ninja Turtle. I don't know. I, I just, that movie was awful. But that's all I'm going to say. See, yeah, I thought, like, I didn't like the story, really, to be honest. Like, I couldn't even track half that story. But I did like the Wonder Woman. I thought she was good when, like, that whole reveal. And then another thing I liked about that movie was the fight scene. I think you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. When it's uh, Batman. I don't even know how he does, but he goes through the uh, floor. Oh, and that kicks sweet. everyone's yeah, ass. That's I love that part. That reminds me of, like, the games. Yeah, yeah. the Batman that's games. Why I, that's that was, like, dead on when he just yeah. takes them all out. That was sweet. That yeah. part was awesome. Yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> there really are some 
good moments. That's in that about movie. the only part. It's just, it'll make like good YouTube. I liked it after yeah. the Martha. Like I thought everything after that was good. It can make yeah. the movie. Can like, make there were just some one or two scenes that they really just needed to change to. Well, make also that. like it's Batman v Superman, but Superman didn't have anything to do for the movie. Yeah. So like it was kind of just a Batman movie. Yeah, and I don't. Think about it. I don't really like Henry Cavill and Cavill. Like Cavill. Yeah, I feel like the trailer was better. Than I the think movie. like he could do better, but they just yeah. don't give him enough to do. Yeah. Yeah. So. So I, I didn't like Man of Steel. I don't know if any of you guys felt. I didn't mind. It was all right. I liked like, it better than Batman vs. Yeah. yeah, I'd have to agree right. that. But we can't go into. Uh, yeah, we're not gonna get into this movie. Four hours. <laughs> <of this. laughs> so uh, <laughs> moving on, <clears throat> put my number nine as a uh, sausage party. I don't know if. So. <laughs> go on. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think Seth Rogen coming in again. You know, he's always delivering those. Because really what he does, he's delivered these funny movies that, you know, anyone can just laugh at. But if you really look at it, like, he actually had some meaning in there. Like, bashing some authorities kind of thing. And I, I love how he does that. So, um, I don't know. It's just a good, funny movie that kind of... It's weird to see all these animated food going and doing and saying the stuff that they oh, do. Man, man. <laughs> so Actually, I, I laughed out loud. Uh, I did yeah, laugh I was that movie. crying. Like, I was surprised. Yeah, I like, it was a very was funny movie. Man. I don't know why. I was like... I was just losing in the theater. <laughs> See, I thought it was funny, like, for the like the first 30 minutes, and then I just thought, like, it was the same humor, like, yeah. over and over. The so ending was, got kind of old. The ending was weird. Yeah, the, the ending, ending, ending was so I, I was, was food orgy the ending, ending but <laughs> I was just like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely that Seth Rogen kind of humor, like, yeah. y- you know what you're expecting when you're doing yeah. it. Yeah, but I honestly love, like, almost all of his movies. I think they're oh, all yeah, hilarious. Oh, yeah, I know. I think they're all hilarious. They're kind of dumb comedy, like I said, with Popstar and Hot Rod. Mm-hmm. Just, I mean, mm-hmm. You laugh, but it's so yeah, stupid. It's like, you know this is dumb, <laughs> what you're watching, but you're still laughing anyway. Exactly. You know, so. Uh, so I'm going to go on to number eight, and I put uh, The Nice Guys. So That was the, also my number eight. It was also your are number we, eight. Are we waiting on it for So you're just higher. All right, right so we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And uh, actually, I'm going to, with a surprise, and uh, number seven, I'm putting uh, Zootopia. I thought it was a great uh, animated movie. I don't know, did any of you guys uh, see that one? I did like that movie, yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, it's a good animated movie that a lot, you know, the whole family will like. Um, it actually made me laugh out loud in some points, like, it's pretty funny. And it actually, like, addressed a huge problem with, like, racism and stuff. Really? Yeah, masks with these animals. Because the whole premise was kind of like the Predators in Zootopia were like being blamed for things they didn't do mm-hmm. so they're like discri- discriminating on people just because or these animals just because they're predators was that the movie with the sloth yeah think. okay yeah, yeah. I, that trailer made me laugh out yeah <laughs> so I mean there was honestly some really funny parts and like a lot of stuff that just went over like kids heads but yeah. I mean it, it addressed a pretty big issue so it's honestly like a pretty good like crime movie too like yeah. I liked like honestly, what yeah. they did with like the mayor and, uh, like, the predators and the prey. I thought that was pretty funny. Honestly. Yeah. I mean, so I have two little brothers, so I have to watch a lot of these, you know, cartoon, like, younger movies, and the whole time I'm just like, oh, my gosh, like, when is this going to end? But Zootopia was one of those movies where I'm like, I, like, actually enjoy this, like, a lot. So yeah. that's why I put it up there at number seven. And then uh, number six, I'm coming in with uh, Everybody Wants Some. I don't know, does Max shake in your head? Is that, do you have, I thought you it was good. That? I liked it. Yeah. Not as much as Days and Confused, but I liked it. Yeah, not as much as Days and Confused. I mean, Days and Confused like that, that, that's one of my awesome. favorites. Awesome. Yeah. So, but really, I mean, it's pretty much like a this generation's Days and Confused. So, I mean, if you yeah. like Days and Confused, you will like the. I, I never got to see it, but I heard it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah I need kinda, to. I need to check that out because I'm a big fan. Of Days yeah, and Confused, it's yeah. good. So, I mean, it's pretty much just like a lighthearted, like feel good movie, and then like every once in a while they come in with a line that's mm-hmm. like actually like oh wow like. You know, makes you think a little bit, you know, yeah. but for the most part, it's just kind of a, you know, lighthearted movie. Yeah. yeah, all that guy's movies, Richard Linklater, I love his movies. They're yeah. all, all, I just feel like all his characters seem, like, so real. Like, have you seen Boyhood? That's a good one. I haven't, but I, I know, like, uh, someone who, like, is the same age as that guy in Boyhood. And, really? like, says, like, his whole life just, like, follows the life of that yeah, guy. Yeah, so, like, It just seems so real. All, so. I and think, I know Days and Confused, like, definitely yeah. feel that way, so... They just, yeah, it kind of yeah. makes you feel like... There's you're definitely... Like, I mean, like yeah, it feels like you're really just, like, mm-hmm. hanging yeah. out with your character. Yeah. You can't, you can't <laughs> beat that. Like, yeah. <laughs> you can't beat that. It, yeah, it literally feels like you're just hanging out with these kids, like, yeah. watching the movie, yeah, like, because like they're it. so, like, real. So that's why I put it on my number six. Uh, all right. Get a grip. All right. Good so, six. my number ten was All the Way. 
I don't know if any of you have seen this. It was an HBO movie starring Brian Cranston as Lyndon B. Johnson and Anthony Mackie as Martin Luther King. Basically, this dove into Johnson's period right after JFK died. He was just kind of thrown into the presidency. And it showed how he didn't really want to be like president at the time, and a lot of people didn't really like him. And it dove into how, like, even though he got the Civil Rights Act, like, he basically got it started and got it going, but, like, he did not support it personally. And I honestly didn't know that. But otherwise than that, I mean, the cinematography was really good in the movie, I thought. And all around, it just gave a lot of information about Johnson. I think a lot of people didn't really realize or know, which was really cool. And it's, like, the first Johnson movie that, kind of got a lot of credit because of these big actors were in it. Anthony Mackie actually did a really great job as Martin Luther King, which is pretty surprising to me. But, uh, yeah, that was my number 10. Number 9 is 10 <clears throat> Cloverfield Lane, which we already talked Jump about. Through, yeah. Like I said, I love the acting in that movie. 8 was Nice Guys, but I believe we're pushing that up. Yep. All right. Yeah. 7 was 8 Days a Week. Now, this was a Beatles documentary by Ron Howard, which I extremely, immensely enjoyed. And I actually had to see it at a smaller theater because it wasn't playing any big, like, box offices. But, uh, this movie was really cool because I love, I'm a huge Beatles fan. If you love the Beatles, you definitely got to see this. But it, it's like a two-hour documentary that dove into the Beatles' life. And it started out in chronological order, like, when they started as a band. And I really thought it was cool how it not only showed their history and all the good stuff, but... Other than the positives, it showed a lot of, like, the negatives about when people started, like, hating them and burning their records, which I actually had no idea about, and I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, but, I need to check that one out, because yeah, I'm a big Beatles fan, too. So. It, yeah, it was really good. So, I just a question it. about, uh, I haven't seen it, but uh, would you say that's something that just, like, Beatles fans would enjoy, or would you say, like, if someone only knew the name The Beatles, do you think they would still enjoy that? I think you'd still enjoy it, because it's a, it's a really interesting documentary, but... You definitely would enjoy it more as a Beatles fan. Okay. Uh, number six was Deadpool. Yeah, we're pushing which back. Which we're also yeah. pushing back. So All right. I believe we can get into the, the lower numbers. Yep, five to two. Uh, we'll go into Max's list for five up. to two. All right, here we go. I got number five, Rogue One. We're going to move that up. Yeah, we're going to move that up. We're going to move that up So four, I had the nice guys, which I think you all had on your list. Yeah, yeah the so, old, uh, Yes. Okay, so we can talk about that one now. The Nice Guys, yeah. I mean, it was another, and I love that genre kind of, I don't know if you call that one Buddy Cop as much as it is, like, an actual, like, crime movie. I'd call but, it Buddy Cop. Yeah, but, yeah. like, the dynamic between Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling is, like, awesome in that movie. I even, like, a lot of people didn't like this, but I liked the little girl in that movie. I thought she was honestly hilarious, and some of the scenes with Russell Crowe and her, just, I lost it, honestly. Yeah. I thought I liked this movie like as a comedy more than I did. It was like quirky. I liked yeah. yeah. It was a cool mix. It was different, yeah. So I really liked that, and then the big revelation like at the end with like mm -hmm. everything that's been happening, mm -hmm. the whole porn industry and all that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I loved Russell Crowe's humor throughout yeah. the whole movie. That he was, was awesome. he was definitely my favorite throughout the movie. I think like those two guys had like perfect chemistry. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to definitely, see that yeah. with them. So I never yeah, saw that like comedy. Either. Like I never would have paired them together. Uh -huh. like, let's put these two together, but it was awesome. Yeah, I think what you said with the daughter, like, she didn't annoy me. It just annoyed me that, like, she was always there because yeah. it didn't really make sense. But then, like, thinking about it, like, I've gotten over it because, like, it, like it's a movie and it's, like, yeah. supposed to be funny. So, like, I don't really care. But uh, I, I thought it was great, uh, uh, like, mystery and comedy um, blended together. So that was cool. I really enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I really liked, like, the, like, theme, like, the kind of feeling of the movie. You know, like, if anyone... I was telling Griff earlier, if anyone's played, like, L.A. Noir, that kind of same time yeah, period, it felt like cool. that game, like, in a movie. So, yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, there's just a bunch of, like, random stuff that occurs. Like, I yeah. have no idea why it's in there, mm -hmm. but then it all makes sense. Yeah. It. And I thought that was cool how they just tied all that in. And there's one, like, really laugh-out-loud moment. Yeah. Um, that I just lost it. In yeah, the I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. You, with the kid? The, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's exactly I was going to go in. Okay, so... Are we good on that? Yeah, number three. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Move okay, on. number three. I got Captain America: Southern War. Uh, number three. See. Yeah, that's my. That's my. That's my number three. How about you? That's my number four. Okay. Yeah. So same with uh. That's my number four. Okay. All right, we'll talk about it then. So Captain America: Civil War. I honestly loved it. I think the airport fight scene, probably one of my favorite yeah. movie scenes of all time. That was. Yeah, that was, that was crazy. Awesome. I remember was watching. Crazy. 
I think I saw the movie four times now in that airport scene. That was the best time. superhero mashup. Like they could. That was oh awesome. yeah, it was literally was like. Sweet. It was like ten times better than anything you could put in like a video game. I thought that yeah. was awesome. And then yeah. Spider Man was yeah. like new and improved. Just, that, yeah. was, that was sweet. Yeah, he was kicking ass. Oh yeah, the Empire Strikes Back reference in that scene. Mm-hmm. But even like before that, I loved the whole movie. Oh, I yeah. loved. I like Zemo. I liked him as a villain a lot. Mm-hmm. And Different the, kind of villain, but yeah. he worked in mm-hmm. this. In this, yeah, story. and it really worked. And like. You see him at, at the end, like, talking to whoever that was, the guy who plays Bilbo Baggins. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, then, uh, Ross is yeah. the character, yeah. And, like, you're like, oh, well, yeah, I guess he was a good villain, if you think about mm-hmm. it. Because he basically won, right? Yeah, really yeah. did. I don't know if we're supposed to, like, spoil that, but he did. He d- if you haven't seen Civil War, like, yeah, why are you I mean, it's on Netflix. Civil it's War, on Netflix. Yeah. We've already given that. Yeah. Yeah. It's called Civil War, and his goal was to have them fight each other, so he, yeah. you can tell by the title that he won. So. Yeah. I like that. The beginning already got me hooked on it. Just that first scene when you see, uh, who was, it? who was, I'm trying to think, but just like the whole dynamic between like Iron Man, I mean, uh, C- Captain America and his whole group. Uh, oh, you like, mean like when they were going after Frost? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, I couldn't think of his name. Throughout the whole movie, it was pretty like, I, I was just like stuck in my chair. Like, there yeah. was not a point where I'm like, eh, this is all right. Like, it just got better. In my yeah. yeah, it's it came closest to like the Avengers, where like the first time you see it, you just like excited mm-hmm. the whole time. Mm-hmm. For, oh, we're still gonna see Black Panther. We're still gonna see Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just keeps getting, getting better. better. I think yeah. the, the only it, thing, yeah, you can keep going, sir. Yeah, I just think like sometimes that gets like too muddled when you throw too many characters in there. Yeah, but it did it didn't in this at all. Like, yeah, there were so like many that. characters and they were all flushed out and they all mm-hmm. were, were good performances and they all worked. That's what I was gonna say. Like Marvel knows how to like do that. What, way better than DC. Like, their mashups oh, yeah. just, they work out well and they flow better. Mm-hmm. But, like, the only thing I was a little disappointed about in the end of the movie, and if you haven't seen it, go see it, but, like, I was kind of disappointed no one died. Yeah, I agree I really that. wanted yeah. someone to die in a fight. Because, yeah. like, in the comics they're supposed to, so, like, someone should have died. At least, I don't know. Someone should have died. But it was still a great movie. Yeah. I, 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 I agree with that, honestly. We've established that Griffin likes when people die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, from last week, he uh, <laughs> told everyone that he didn't enjoy watching Leia being older. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but Civil War is definitely just like Marvel doing Marvel at its best. I was, you know what I mean? I think that was probably the, <laughs> like the best they could do yeah, with, like, with mashup yeah. wise. That and was awesome. I really did like, <clears throat> I think Max, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but like the relationship of. You know, Tony Stark and Captain America, like, mm-hmm. kind of going against each other. And honestly, both sides felt, like, very, like, real. And you could yeah. kind of, like, see, like, the pros and cons of both sides. It what wasn't just, like... <clears throat> Dude, like, I was starting Team Cap, and then I would go... I went to switch Team Iron Man, but I think at the end I was Team Cap. Really? Like, yeah. I, like, flip-flopped twice. I, I was the same way. I started Team Cap, but then I kind of grew on Team Iron Man. I don't really? know why. I just... Yeah. I liked his team more. I like Iron yeah. Man. I've always liked Iron Man. Yeah. <laughs> I've like, always... Just, <clears throat> I love Black Panther, I love Spider-Man, yeah. so I had to go Team Iron Man. Yeah, I don't know, like McLean said, I was flipping like four or five times during the movie, because, I mean, that's like what I just said, that's what yeah. they did so well, mm-hmm. is that they showed you the good and bad side of mm-hmm. each. They, like, there wasn't like a bad guy and a good guy kind of thing, yeah. it was like, really made you kind of choose yeah. what team you were on. And I heard they didn't <clears throat> kill anyone, because they wanted it to be like that, they wanted you to know, like, you could be Team Iron Man, you could be Team yeah. Cap, because if Iron Man, like, okay, that makes sense. dies at the end, you're gonna be Team Iron Man, because yeah. he's, like, a martyr, like, he died for... Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I That's thought that really was kind of cool. Yeah. I heard... I don't know if that was, like, actual quote from the directors, but I heard something like that, that's, like, why they didn't kill off anybody. Yeah. That definitely makes sense. That makes sense, yeah. So... We done talking about that. I know you've been yeah, talking about good. it all day. Yeah. Okay, then number two, I had Hell or High Water. Okay, that's my number five. You guys have it. That was not on my list. Mm. Okay, all right, just we'll talk about it. From the start, I was already into this movie, all the bank robberies and stuff. And then it did slow down a little, but I still just loved the whole like anti-hero concept of it. Like You got Jeff Bridges as the cop, who's just a total asshole to his like yeah. buddy. And then you have Chris Pine. I don't know his name in the movie, but he was... Like, he did bank robberies, but he did them. It was a good reason. Mm-hmm. And then, so you don't know really who to side with. And then his brother, I mean, he's he's kind of an asshole. He's yeah, kind he of kind of a guy. Guy, so. But, expe- and then that movie, I think, has the best third act of any movie I've seen this whole year. Just yeah. from the second they walk into that last bank until the end, it's got one of the best chase scenes I've seen. Just awesome action. It's really intense. I heard it was like a modern western. Yeah, it was. Of, yeah. yeah. And it, yeah, it took place 
and you, I remember you told me that all that's like actually going on in society today, like with the banks. Yeah. So like the, like, um, just sort of the premise, like without spoiling anything, is that uh, he's gonna lose his his ranch to the bank, mm -hmm. um, because this is happening in Texas um, with fracking. Uh, like banks are seizing ranches from uh, from like. Uh, less wealthy people, some some poor people who had ranching as a way of life, but that's no longer a suitable way of life for them. And so the banks, when like the owner um, passes away, they can foreclose it, um, like before it passes on to the next, um, like if they still haven't paid off all the mortgage. Um, and so uh, it's sort of just like a vicious cycle of poverty there for all these people because the banks are taking these lands and just making more money on the oil there, but these people are losing their land, basically. And I think there's a great line that um, Jeff Bridges' partner says, because he's Native American, he mm -hmm. says to him, your people took my land back in the day, and now these people, he points at the bank, are taking your land. Mm -hmm. And um, I just thought that, I just thought it was cool that it deals with like a real issue that's going on right now, yeah. but it's also like a really great suspenseful thriller that makes you question which side you're on. That makes me like that movie anymore, just like knowing that that's like really going on. And then, yeah, that's basically all I have to say about that. Also, that final confrontation yeah, between Chris Pine and Jeff yeah. Bridges, that was that was awesome. And, like, that last shot when he's just, like, walking off and you, like... Yeah. It kind of leaves it open-ended. Leaves it open, and, and I think it's a perfect ending. Yeah, it was yeah. a perfect ending to, like, a really, really good movie, I thought. All right. Yeah, Number one, what is it? We're not doing oh, number yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number one, sorry. All right. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll get to, well, we'll go to my number five, which was Hell or High Water, so we just talked about that. And my number four was Civil War, we just talked about that. And my number three is Deadpool. Anyone higher or... Mine's still six that. on my list. Six. So. Uh, Mine's a little higher, higher so... Oh, yeah. Alright, higher, alright. Uh, then I guess the only one we're talking about now for me is a movie I just saw, Patriot's Day, is my number two mm -hmm. movie of the year. Good things about that. Yeah, um, Patriot's Day, this was actually, like, really close to being my number one, but, like, I couldn't put it number one, um, uh, just because of what is number one, I don't think anything is better than that. But I think, uh, this is, like, such an important movie, and I, like, I hate when people say, oh, this is an important movie, and they talk about a movie about, like, cross-dressing crackheads in Tulsa, oh. something like that. Like, that. <laughs> like, this is a movie about, like, real heroes in the police and the first responders and just people in the community who contributed to, um, to stopping the bombers before mm -hmm. more people got hurt. If you don't, <clears throat> first of all, if you don't know what it's about, it's about the Boston Marathon bombing from three years ago and, um, like, how they captured those guys. Well, killed one and captured the other. Um, and uh, you might question, should it be made, like, this soon? Like, is it too soon? Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. I think that this proves that you can do a movie, like, just three years after an event like this. Because it shows, um, like, it, it's not about, like, just the horror of the event, but it's about the good that came out of it with within the community. And it's about, like, the real heroes. And I, I think it's... It's great that they show all the different perspectives of, like, the people who were hurt by the event and, uh, of the police officer who lost his life and of, um, like, the commissioner of Boston and the commissioner of the town where they captured the guys. Um, it just shows all the different perspectives. And, um, when they show, like, the actual bombers, it's just, like, haunting because, like, the, like that's just, like, the face of evil there. Mm -hmm. And I think it's incredible that it shows how this community came together to defeat evil and hate, and, um, and it's just an incredible true story, and, uh, it's, like, dedicated to all the people who were, who lost their lives and who were injured in the bombing, mm -hmm. and, um, I think, uh, what this movie does and what my next movie does is that the end, it shows the real people, it shows real interviews, so oh, the last, like, cool. ten minutes well, is, like, sort of a documentary, mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's so important to show the real heroes, um, like the guy who, um, I mean, it's not really a spoiler because it's real events that happened three years ago, I think most people know, but the guy that was kidnapped who escaped and like gave their location, I th uh, they showed that real guy and I think that that's a hero that needs to be recognized because of his bravery to, 
to take his life into his own hands. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, I just think it's an incredible story and, uh, everyone needs to see it. Um, it's in theaters now, so definitely I think everyone should see Patriot's Day. Have any of you seen it yet? I have not, but I've ever seen the trailer for that. I'm like, I hope they do this right, because I, that's just... Yeah, if they don't, that could be... Yeah, yeah, from who I talked to, they said it's like everyone said it's really good. Yeah, yeah. Like a job well done. And I was glad when I saw like Peter Berg and Mark Wahlberg. Like that's the perfect like combination for that movie, especially yeah. Mark Wahlberg's like a Boston guy. Uh, too, so. mm-hmm. I think this is their best too, like better than Lone Survivor. Yeah, and I love um, Lone Survivor. And Lone Survivor yeah. did the same thing where they talked like they showed, showed the real, real, yeah, yeah, at the end. Deepwater Horizon did that too, which I really yeah. also and I haven't Peter seen that Berg one either. Yeah, not as good, but it's, yeah. it's all right. Um, but yeah, just incredible story. And Mark Wahlberg, like. I know, like, some people give him crap, like, The Happening and some of the shit, oh, like, Transformers, gosh. but, like, mm-hmm. he's, the he, like, so he's bad. really good in this movie. Yeah. Like, he can act, like, Pain don't... Game. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, but, but, like, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. like we'll trash him, but, like, he is this, is, this is really good. Yeah. Like, I still I, love seeing a new movie with Mark Wahlberg and this is Transformers. Transformers, yeah. Transformers, yeah. I don't care about yeah. that. I love Mark Wahlberg. I think he's yeah. awesome. Yeah. All right, well, uh, we'll move on to Eric's Eric. number five. All right, so uh put my number five as uh, Doctor Strange. That was also my number five. Oh, it was also your number five? All right, yeah. so just talk about it here together. Um, what I really, it was just, like, so, like, different than all the other superhero movies that came out. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't, like, just a run-of-the-mill kind of, like, superhero movie. It was, like, so much, like, going on with, like, space and how they, like, talk about time and all that kind of stuff, and it was really kind of like a mind bender more than like a superhero movie with still like the superhero kind of elements thrown in so that's really uh why i liked it so much what do you have to yeah. say about it Griff? it was different from other <clears throat> marvel movies even though i really like other marvel movies it was like the setup of it was totally different like the mm-hmm. structure like i remember thinking like am i watching like a superhero movie right now because it was more like this awesome magic movie i, I don't even know how to describe it yeah it wasn't like a super a normal stereotypical superhero movie mm-hmm. It was really cool. Did you guys see it? Yeah, I thought it was awesome. Yeah, I, thought it was I mean, great. those visuals were oh insane. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Some parts, so. yeah, when he, um, when he, there was one part where he was like falling through like that magical realm. That oh, was insane. Yeah. I mean, I remember seeing the trailer for the first time, seeing all the like buildings change shape and stuff. I'm like, oh gosh, they're going to way overdo this. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, Inception, Inception times like, yeah. But it actually like, like, it worked out. It worked and out. It was, it was really cool. Yeah. yeah. Marvel, they, they're like, all their weird superhero movies, I think, yes. do really good. Like Guardians, Guardians, yeah. Guardians, Guardians yeah. Like, yeah. Like, Ant Man wasn't even. Bad. I was gonna say Ant Man. Ant Man was really good. Yeah. 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 I liked Ant Man a lot. Actually. Doctor Strange was yeah. awesome, and I liked. I thought the villain in Doctor Strange was really good, and usually Marvel doesn't do a great job with yeah. villains, and I liked him. I think what it was like really unique, without spoiling how he, how he like, won in the end. Yeah, and that was yeah. cool. Like, it like I haven't seen that. It's before. pretty funny. It was too. funny, <laughs> and yeah, I enjoyed the end a lot. So. Yeah, it was a lot funnier yeah. than I thought it was going to be. I never think of, like, Benedict Cumberbatch being, like, a pretty funny guy. Like, yeah, I was never really yeah, a big fan of his, yeah. but I loved that movie. And I yeah, he's really good in that one. More. Yeah, I enjoyed it. All so, right. uh, on to number four, Civil War. I okay. already talked about that one. Um, another one of the, uh, for number three, another one of the animated movies, actually. Um, this is one that my little brothers, they, like, kind of dragged me to the theater and did it, it looked, it blew me away, I gotta say. <laughs> With uh, number three, I have Sing. And, uh, I mean, I mean, it, like, this, be f- just from, like, the song selection and, like, how they actually really made you care about, like, the characters. I mean, they had songs from, like, Adele to, like, Frank Sinatra. You know what I mean? Like, there it was a huge selection. Um, there's a, they had a bunch of different stories going on, so I thought they would just kind of be, like, you know, you don't really care about anyone. But they actually made it, like, come together really well. And, like, you cared about each character. And they all had, like, their own struggle that they were kind of, like, coming over. And, um, you know, at the end, obviously, I mean, it's a kid's movie, so they all did. I mean, I'm not going to spoil anything. But, like, you know, they all came over, like, their big obstacle and they, like, came together. And, I mean, really, like, it was good. Like, I gotta say, like, it was, was it a Disney movie? I don't, I don't know, think it's from it the was. company that yeah. made like Despicable Me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I thought it looked like trash personally, but I haven't seen it, so yeah. I guess if but, you like yeah. it, no, I mean, honestly, I, I was in your same boat. Like I looked <laughs> yeah. at the trailer. My mom said that I had to take him. I watched the trailer. I'm like, oh god, like yeah. it's gonna be another one of these movies. Yeah. And literally within probably 20 minutes, I'm like, this is this is good. Yeah. See, yeah. I I saw like. 
three other animated movies before that, and I was just like, no, because I watched Finding Dory. I thought that was shitty. Yeah, I, was I heard it was awful. awful. And then, uh, what was the other one? Oh, The Secret Life of Pets. That oh, was yeah. just god awful. I heard that was bad. <laughs> and then I too. liked Kubo. And then I never saw the other D- newest Disney one, too. Moana. Moana. I heard it was pretty good. Yeah, I heard yeah. it was pretty good, actually. But I mean, with saying, like, I would probably go watch it again. Mm-hmm. Like, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it was good. Yeah. Um, so, for my number two, I put, uh, Deadpool. Okay, that, uh, uh yeah. That was my six. Okay. Six. I think it's fair, fair game. Was, that was yeah, my so I think, I think yeah, it's fair it's game. Looks, yeah. yeah, it's six, too. Uh, with Deadpool, just kind of the same thing as, uh, Doctor Strange. It's kind of, like, made fun of and, like, was kind of that superhero kind of vibe, you know what I mean? Like, Ryan Reynolds just absolutely ripping on, like, himself and all the other superheroes and, I mean... I was, like, laughing out loud at some points. So, uh, yeah, I just really enjoyed it. Yeah, Deadpool was good because we finally got a chance to see, like, a rated R version of these superheroes. And they they did it well, I think. Ryan yeah. Reynolds, obviously, he really wanted the role and he killed the role. So, I think he did pretty well at, like, portraying Deadpool. Yeah, it's uh, it's my, my favorite uh, comic book movie of the year, I think, um... It's the the most rewatchable movie of the year. I've watched it like, like I put it in the Blu-ray and watched it just for fun, like mm-hmm. at least four times already. Um, and like, it's a great like group movie, like just laugh out loud. Um, best comedy of the year, I'd say. Well, not even though it's not just a comedy, um, but it's also got a, a great story uh, too. So I I I thought it it blew me away. Um, we all had really high expectations, and I think it met every expectation that I had at least. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed Deadpool. I made up for the Wolverine Deadpool. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which was absolute garbage. <laughs> yeah. But Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that the guy there with his mouth shit. No mouth. Yeah. That was terrible. Um, but I actually think it's a lot cooler too, like how the movie even like came about. You know what I mean? Like he Ryan Reynolds was pushing for it and the you know, the big studios, none of them would take it. So he released this like clip that he had like some people make and that he mm-hmm. dressed up for and then fans just absolutely loved it and the studios were like all right we could actually do something with this yeah and they turned it into a whole movie and that was that was cool yeah i think ryan Reynolds was like the perfect casting for that because yeah. he's uh, like, he's yeah, like i don't think there could like, be he, anyone he better that like, yeah yeah i know uh, griffin's just waiting for him to accept that best picture oscar dressed as deadpool <laughs> 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 I, I think Deadpool should at least show up to the Oscars, though. If he goes, he should just be dead. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. would be funny yeah, to see him do that, him. and I would love to see him stand up there and just, like, rip on me. I feel like you he know, would do that. Like, yeah. If he, <laughs> if he gets nominated, Academy. he's coming as Deadpool. They should have had Deadpool host. The Academy yeah. will hate <laughs> Oh, my God, that'd be yeah, perfect. That'd be yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, I loved it. I, I, there was nothing, I, no issues. I just thought it was a great comedy and mm-hmm. great comic book movie. Anything else you had, Eric? Or? Uh, I think I'm good. All right, I'll move on to mine. So my number five was Doctor Strange, which we already all talked Strange about. Did, yeah. Great movie. Uh, number four was Hacksaw Ridge. Oh, we're pushing that one back. All right. <laughs> Three was Civil War, which we already talked, talked about. about and yeah. number two was Rogue One. Mm. Push it back. Yeah. Push we're it back. Push all right. Right. What does that mean, Eric? Well, all right, well. Wait, did I, you do Oh, that was your two. That was my number two. Oh, all right. So, I, okay. So I know what you're going to do. Now. <laughs> all right, Chris. <laughs> Thanks. Um, all right, we're on to Max's number one then. All right, can I get a drum roll? All right, big spoiler. Right. <laughs> big reveal number here. Number one, Arrival. So, all right. I know, McLean, you won't like this one at all. No, yeah. no, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I, I just think it's it. great. But the performances in it were awesome. Oh, Amy Adams, she's awesome. I kind of, she's probably one of my, may be my favorite actress, even though she was in Batman over Superman. <laughs> really? But, she, yeah, she was awesome. I think her, the scene of Lois Lane in the bathtub just, like, takes, uh, uh, I forgot takes it up a whole way with rain. So, yeah. And just the whole premise of this movie, it definitely takes a spin on, like, we've seen movies that deal with alien evasions. We've seen movies that deal with time travel. We've seen movies that deal with all this. So the way they, like talked about these concepts was like so much different than all the other sci-fi movies and that's why I liked it so much. I don't know, do you guys want, else want to talk about it? Yeah, I mean, well, I'll yeah, I'll talk about it some. Um, I mean, I enjoyed it. I just think like I'm seeing it as like number one on all these people's lists and I, I just think that because I, like I had a, 
I had sort of have an issue with it where like I think the end kind of just let me down a little bit like I was wanting more mm-hmm. but I mean I still really enjoyed the movie um and I think first thing I'll say the cinematography was yeah, incredible I agree that with was that. awesome yeah and and I'm excited because the cinematographer is doing the Han Solo movie which I'm not really excited for but really yeah, I'm not well just because like I don't think they need to do it yeah I kind of agree with that but yeah. like that'll make it better um if you look at the cast, though, that gets me a little more... Like, Woody Harrelson is in here. Yeah, in yeah, he's going to be in it now. Campino. Yeah, yeah, Lando, yeah. Um, but I thought... I, I think it was a different take on a um, on an alien invasion movie, and I, I do agree, good performances. I think um, Dennis Villanueva, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but he's a great director. I just think that some of his movies miss for me, but it's not his fault, because I think he always gets great performances, and... Uh, always has great visuals. I just think that sometimes, like, the stories of his movies, like, like Sicario was another one where yeah. it kind of lost me at the end. I wasn't um, a big fan of Sicario either. I wasn't yeah. a big fan of that, but I thought The Arrival, like, it did it did it better than, like, that movie. Did. Oh, yeah, I, li- I like Arrival better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Eric, where do you... Oh, do you know it? No, I don't think you guys said it at all. Have you seen that movie? I've not. Oh, I yeah, know, yeah, I know. Yeah, Every yeah, weekend, yeah. I, I just try to get it. Yeah, you're out. Right. But... Yeah. <laughs> oh so, man. Why did you think like the ending? Why did you think it didn't leave you with much? Like, well, okay, so there's like a reveal, right? Mm-hmm. I guess. Without saying what that is, yeah. I saw that coming like a, like a mile away. Really. And by the time that that happened, like nothing else really happened after that. So I was just like. I was waiting to see, like, something else, because they reveal it with, like, 45 minutes left in the movie, and then it's sort of just, like, not a whole lot happens after that. Yeah. Like, like I can't I can't spoil it, because it's still pretty recent, yeah. and we have mm-hmm. someone sitting and here right now. Yeah. 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 And I'll be I wish you've seen it. Yeah. But there's yeah. still, like, after that, I kind of disagree with you, because there's the part with Jeremy Renner, where she has to make that decision. Yeah. And then there's also... With, like, the whatever country, Chinese. China, Korea. yeah. That part was sweet. That I was just, one of my favorite parts. That, that gave me, like, an Inception vibe. Yeah, it gave me chills watching that I was that like, part. wow, this is, I really enjoyed that part. And maybe I'm just a dumber moviegoer than you, but it took me, like, kind of a while to realize, like, what was going on. I knew something was coming. Yeah. I was expecting it. Like, yeah, first hand. Going that. into it, I was like, all right, something, like, something's obviously, like, there's a twist in this movie, but it's still, like, I was like, they did really well like delivering this still yeah i still enjoyed it but, but yeah I, I i mean it's like an eight out of ten for me like mm-hmm. i still really yeah. liked it so <laughs> yeah. I, yeah i just i just liked all these movies better yeah so i just spent like the whole movie like trying to figure out because i knew there was going to be a twist just trying to figure out what it was and then yeah. it hit me i'm like whoa it blew my mind really <laughs> all right we'll move on mm-hmm. unless you had a lot that's all i gotta say we'll, about that we'll probably, yeah. yeah all right uh my number one hacksaw ridge all um right. Yeah, like I said, Patriot's Day was very close, but uh, I think this is definitely the best movie of the year. Um, I just think Mel Gibson is back. Um, This has the most realistic war action since Saving Private Ryan. Might be like these. These might be like the top two like most realistic war movies I've ever seen. And um, again, true story. Um, It's a story that needs to be told. A, a movie that everyone needs to see um, because that's a man th- that Andrew Garfield played who stayed true to his beliefs. He he wouldn't kill, he wouldn't hold a weapon, but he went into battle in, in Japan in World War II and he saved 75 lives as a medic. So just incredible story of a man who like stood, stood against uh, what like the norm was and just took that incredible risk of running into battle without a weapon. I just think yeah, it's yeah. incredible that he did that and that yeah. he stayed he stayed after like everyone had like the other soldiers had left to, to go save other um, other soldiers and he saved seventy five lives. Just incredible story and I mean Mel Gibson say what you will about his personal life, but this guy is one of the best like one of the top five directors working. Um, I mean he got good performances out of Sam Worthington Vince Vaughn, the kid from the Point Break remake, like, all of them are good in this movie, and that's thanks to Mel Gibson, and, like, the war action is also thanks to Mel Gibson, so, yeah. I want him to win Best Director, but, I mean, it's probably gonna go to, like, the, the La La Land guy, but, 
I mean, uh, <laughs> I think uh, it's it's definitely the best movie of the year. I thought me. the war scenes were like, it literally, I was like, this is just like how I felt when I saw Saving Private Ryan. They were so realistic. Yeah. And even like, I remember the scene where Andrew Garfield is pulling like Vince Vaughn on something. I can't remember what it is, but he's like shooting as he's like pulling him away yeah. from like the battlefield. It's like a jacket or something. Yeah, because he yeah. can't walk. And it gave me like a Tarantino vibe. Like it would be in like one of his movies. Mm-hmm. It was just, it was really cool. Yeah, and I think it's a great like juxtaposition from the beginning of the mo- of this movie where he's like in Virginia and it's like all peaceful, and he like meets this girl, and then it goes to war, and it just shows you like mm-hmm. the like the hellfire of war, and it just it's perfect how it shows. It's perfect in the way that it shows how terrible war World War Two actually was. was yeah, yeah. Um, and I also think like the. The boot camp scenes or like the training camp scenes are actually pretty great and kind of funny. Um, uh, with like some of the characters, I think they do a good job of uh, showing how like like making you know all the different characters because there's a lot of uh, characters in this movie and they like do something to make you remember each one of them. Um, like the guy who's doing pull ups naked when the drill sergeant walks in, he's just standing there naked the whole time, so you're gonna remember that guy. <laughs> and they do something like that for all of them, so you so all these characters stand out and it, it was a good way of balancing uh all the different characters. So <clears throat> I've talked about it long enough, we're getting close to our um our point, but uh Hacksaw Ridge is for me ten out of ten best movie of the year. Eric, what's yours? Uh number one, I had to go with uh, Rogue One. And, uh, you know, we've talked about this before on the show. Um, I'm not going to take a huge amount of time because, like McLean said, we are getting close. But, uh, I mean, I thought there was nothing that they could do better there. And it was pretty close as my number two, but just that Darth Vader scene at the end, oh, it just really, oh. it pushed it to the number one. Like, that, that was, so was probably, like, one of my favorite scenes, like, any movie that I've seen. So, I mean. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. I mean, it's just a great movie. That's so all. I'm just going to leave it simple at that. So, great if you that and the airport scene were the two best scenes of the year, I think. Yeah, I oh, agree with that. Oh, yeah. There's just so many great scenes in it and so many, like, great references back to the old movies yeah. for the people that, you know, really know. I'll and it's that. not so much that, like, you have to see all the old movies to see it. So, I mean, it's, it's yeah, great. Yeah, I think that movie did, like, as well as it possibly could. Just, like, honestly, it's, like, it comes close to, like, the original three with me. Dang. Because that, it was just so good. You don't even have to be a Star Wars fan. To enjoy the movie, because it's like a Star Wars war movie. It was just like, the beach scene was awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, 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 that was yeah. so The whole cool. third act was just incredible. incredible. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we, I mean, we all did a whole show on it. We are, yeah, we, I mean, everyone knows how we feel about yeah. it. Yeah. So, Max, you weren't here, did you have a whole lot to add? Or? I just, I loved how it expanded the universe. They added new stuff, new mm-hmm. characters, <clears throat> like, the planet. I thought Jetta, I, that, like, that was the really whole cool. time yeah. there, I loved that. Yeah. And then, Obviously, the end. I don't know what it was called, where they were. Scarif, I think. Scarif, yeah. I enjoyed was... all the new characters. Like, they yeah. were all awesome. Yeah, I heard, like, people, like, hating on them. Like, I, I don't understand had, that. Yeah, I love them all. I had no problem with them. I loved K2SO, though, by, yeah. by far. Yeah, that's <laughs> everyone's favorite, yeah. yeah. And Griffin, you probably liked how they showed, like, a young Princess Leia now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because they don't like her old, yeah. <laughs> Back when she was, yeah. All and right. Um... Is that all you had? That's it, yep. Yeah. Alright. My number rest. one was also The Arrival. Yeah, we'll just let like, you talk about it more. Just like you, Max, yeah. yeah. Like I said, like, when a movie can blow my mind, that's when I know I'm like, this is like a good movie. And I gave it like a 9, 9.5. I don't think any movie this year really had a 10, but like, this is definitely the highest on my list. And throughout the movie, there was just such a cool vibe and such a different take on aliens. Because, like, I've seen so many alien movies, but, like, this take was completely different. It wasn't, like, your stereotypical alien. It was just, like, a whole new mm-hmm. scene. How they, like, never really showed them up close. It was just kind of, like, a from a distance in the fog. Like, it was really cool. I'm not going to spoil what happened in the end for Eric, but, I mean, the twist was awesome. And, like you said, that part in the end... Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not going to say it, but yeah. the twist was awesome, and it really it kind of blew my mind a little bit. Even though I expected something was coming, it still was just like a, a wow moment to me. So, I don't know. That's what makes a movie great to me. Yeah. Sci-fi movies lately, I don't know why. I just think they've been, like, so yeah. good for the last, like, 
like this year we had Arrival, last year we had Ex Machina. And Ex Machina. We had, yeah. we had The Martian mm-hmm. too, and they're, they're, mm-hmm. like they're more realistic than some of the older sci-fi movies that people remember. They're more in depth now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think the writing really cool. is really good. even like Interstellar sort of. I don't know. That's that's uh, a little more Interstellar. Out there. I liked the first time, and then mm-hmm. after that, I realized that I I. Hated it. I haven't seen it. Really. Well, and like okay, like my thing with Interstellar is it's so it's so scientific until the end, and then it just throws all the yeah, away. and yeah. that's so why that, that like almost ruins the whole movie. That's why the so. ending of Arrival it hit everywhere. I thought Interstellar missed, which yeah. was perfect. Bookshelf, yeah, yeah, space bookcase. So. <laughs> is that all you had? Yeah, that's it. All right. Well, uh, I want to thank all of you guys uh, for being here. I think this was another great episode. Uh, our it has been uh, one year now of Movies with McLean. First episode was one year ago tomorrow. So oh, thank man. you to all of our uh, viewers. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, uh, <laughs> thanks, guys. Thanks to everyone who stuck with us for, for a year. Uh, we're not going away anytime soon. So uh, stick around, uh, and we'll be back next week. Um, and uh, Griff, I think... Uh, You'll like our topic next week. We're doing Matthew McConaughey. Oh, yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> so, um, thanks for watching. And until uh, next week, just got to keep on living, man. L I V I N. Wait for you to get it on your own. X go deliver to your knock knock. Open up the door to spill. With the non stop pop out from stainless steel. Go hard getting busy with it. But I got such a good heart that I make the mother. Uh, wonder if you did it.